let's do this, people. How we doing? We here at the trifecta. It's your boy Brayden here with your girl Desi and Brandy. I know we're well pretty good. Up to I'm just feeling it right now. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um so today's episode, we're going to continue on with our movie theme, considering that we talked about The Little Mermaid last week. If you haven't listened to that, make sure to go back and listen to that first before you start this one, just because you're awesome. And it's an awesome episode. And it's, yeah, Little Mermaid. It's great. Awesome. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, Everything's awesome. So this week, we're, we're going to go over our favorites. So we're going to talk our favorite movies actresses and actors and get into it okay let's so, get into it before we get into it though i want to learn about your week how was your week guys <laughs> oh, God. We're get to, i'm i'm in a mood just let me be <laughs> that lip gloss changed you who yeah. are you i know welcome back <laughs> my, my my inner jeffrey <laughs> <laughs> jeffrey star who brandy craft <laughs> no plug no. <laughs> No plug. Uh, week was good. Week was really good, actually. Um, I'm on vacation for my birthday week, so I'm just chilling. It's your birthday things. tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll be old and sad. <laughs> so sixteen. <right? laughs> so sixteen, right? We're gonna pretend the twenty nine is uh, six. Twenty nine is the new sixteen. Is that a thing? Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. Yeah. Girl, that, with that highlight, you 16. <laughs> she blinding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. How about you guys? Uh, yeah, the week was was good. We had a full weekend, uh, some birthdays that we went out for. And yeah, today was a little stressful. But then I got to watch my nephew and he is adorable and oh, so really that's fun. That's the cutest name. Atlas, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm like so super cute. jealous. I was like, why can't I have a cool name? I want to go exploring now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, and it was so cute because like the kids were so lovey with him. Like, they were just like kissing on him and excited that he, like, he was there and he was like theirs for the taking. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, oh. Like, look at this toy and look at this, and I'm going to show you everything. <laughs> so it was really, it was he? really cute. Uh, he's not one yet, so he, I think. Um, August he turns one. Oh, still, wow. a, still yeah. a potato. Still a small potato. Well, yeah. I like potatoes. Um, no. My week was good. Um, I had my job interview. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get the job, but that's totally okay. Um, it was a really great like learning experience. Um, I'm excited to like grow with it more and be able to like bring everything that I've learned from it into my next. Um, application for the position that i want um but and maybe that one won't be temporary then yeah um fingers crossed but you know it yeah. is what it is yeah. um just excited just was even happy to get an interview after everything you know so Absolutely. um just super stoked about that but no it was a good week um aqua fits going great the yeah ladies yeah love it. <laughs> the, the, that's the like my favorite button. thing I'm with like, how's Linda and Glenda and Helen? Like, tell me all the things. Oh, I have my, my newest friend. Her name is Dixie. She's a dog. Yeah, I remember oh, Dixie. I was yes, like, what I about Dixie? Dixie. <laughs> so, I really hope no. she's from Texas. Uh, I don't know where she is, actually, Rem. I should ask her. That's she recently that's, moved here. Oh, I was going to say, is that statist? Is that like, <laughs> you know, because they're from Texas, they should be named Dixie? <laughs> I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> No, ju- no judgments here. It's all good. All right. Okay, good. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I guess we should get into our things. I'm into really excited. Things about things. I know Listen. you are. <laughs> <laughs> if, like, if anything were ever to be, like, my kind of, like, topic, it's film. So, like, I'm ready. She's ready. <laughs> I should- we should I should we should share like our like like screenshots of our like conversation throughout the week and of Brandy like being like how do I do <laughs> how do I pick my top three <laughs> it physically it physically pained me to choose only three of all of these because there's just so many great things out there and great actors and actresses so you know but I did it I oh might my change God. my mind like mid mid podcast though <laughs> <laughs> mine honestly my, mine were so easy to pick i, I think it's mm. just it's like when i 
for for me movies like yeah i like movies i'm not like that huge of a movie buff to be like like your stuff is probably going to be more way more complex than mine um or mine (laughs) (laughs) so like I'm like, okay, yeah, like, great. And and I wasn't sure if movies included documentaries, so maybe that's an entirely yeah, different Yeah, I episode. left out documentaries because yeah, I was I like, hey, it, yeah, I feel like it's like its own thing. It's not like a movie because you're getting a lot of information in a documentary, so it can impact you in so many ways. I could could not possibly pick like three Only if it three. was movies and documentaries. Oh my <laughs> God, no, no, no. We could do three documentaries like eventually because there's a yeah. lot of good ones out there um but yeah no i definitely think like uh, mine mine were really easy i feel like mine are so basic and i'm like eh. <laughs> okay you don't have to be we don't have to be complex it's it should be it's, filled with something it's, that sh- it's for entertainment it should be enjoyed it should make you feel something so i feel like no answer is the wrong answer or a basic answer it's what you enjoy that's true that's true i just like <laughs> i know when i um my cousin my cousins were like every time they'd be like oh did you see this movie i'd be like no they're like what and like literally every movie like pretty I'm much that person. Ever- <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> sorry about that yeah. um, but yeah i don't know so who wants to share their their favorite movies first me uh, uh, i'll uh, be here in a minute so maybe maybe okay. not start with me i'll I'll go first because my again, like I say mine were <laughs> mine are kind of basic. So, um, so my top three favorite movies, um, were Titanic, The Craft, Ooh. and Scream. Ah, yes. yeah. Are you um, doing it in order from like three, two, one, or one, two, three, or is it just like all kind of collective? I didn't get that okay <laughs> i can like rank them mm-hmm. um I, prob- I bet you if i probably could rank them it'd probably be titanic scream and then the craft i think yeah. i would put them that number. um my like reasoning for those um titanic's like probably like like it's definitely one of my all-time favorite movies obviously um because we're doing this topic um but i remember when it first came out back in 1997 like um <laughs> <laughs> aging myself now but so i remember much being asked to go see the movie like in theaters and i had never i didn't know what titanic you were like weren't you like nine Uh, no i was five yeah you were even younger (laughs) (laughs) okay i was like what nine year olds are gonna go see titanic what remember i was 17 brandy come on (laughs) right sorry i'm the worst friend i'm like yeah you're not no (laughs) um but no honestly um i remember going to see in theaters and i knew nothing about titanic like it was whatever and i just remember being in such like awe behind the movie i remember like i was when i sat in the movie i I was sitting back in my chair and by the end of it i was on the like the the edge of my seat watching the movie and i was like obsessed i remember I ended up getting like the movies for christmas like the year they came out on vhs in the two part yes (laughs) Yes, yeah. <laughs> a whole big block with the two, two <laughs> tapes. Yeah, it, was so, it was, it was. I loved the movie so much that my parents had to get a the VHS rewinder so that when I finished watching the first one, I could rewind it while I was watching the second one, so I could put it back <laughs> in. Yeah. Um, and it was like to the point that I knew. <laughs> <laughs> it was to the point that I knew the lines. Like I could Oh yeah. Them. Yes. Um and like even to like to like to this day, like I whenever it comes on, if I see it on Netflix, I always watch it. Um I don't know, I just I love everything about it. I, I watched a really good documentary actually with James Cameron, and they were kind of um they, they were doing additional testing in regards to like what actually happened and comparing um the movie to what like actually could have happened because when they did the movie they didn't have like all the scientifics down they didn't have all the technology that we do now to like really um I put things in really depict it. yeah and so um yeah it it was a really good documentary and like a really good reminder at like the end of it all was that like um because james cameron once said he's like i really hope i didn't like offend anybody's families um and so this because you have like in and then like that's the thing that i i almost forget sometimes when i watch the movie is that this was a real event like real people mm-hmm. died um yeah. and even when in when i was in winnipeg they had the um, the titanic exhibition that came through mm-hmm. i went i went to that 
And that was like probably one of the most amazing things I've ever gone to, to be able to like feel the iceberg and like how cold it, the water was and to see the, these artifacts and like you could, the energy in the, in the room, you could feel um, yeah. what was going on, you know? Um, and like, the thing that I really liked about that exhibition was that they had like, when you went in, you were given um, your ticket was actually like a boarding pass and you were somebody that was on the Titanic. And at the end of it, you Stop. saw a list of people that lived and the people that died and you were found out if you actually died or not. Um, did you die? Uh, I did. I was actually somebody that was in the movie. I was John Jacob Astor. Um, oh my God. Who was the richest man on the ship. Um, but yeah, like that whole thing, I just like... It was so crazy because, like, again, you get that same feeling as you do in, like, the movie when you first walk through and, like, you see everything, that everything's so grand. And, you like, you get this excitement and this nostalgia from it. And then as soon as it got to, like, the point of the iceberg, you literally just, like, your stomach, like, sinks and you just feel this, like, weight. And I was like, holy cow. And, like, at the end of it, I was, like, in tears because I was like. Oh, yeah. You forget, you forget that that was like a real life event and you know and then you see these names on this this wall and then it's just like holy cow you know so um i don't know that's just like one of my all-time favorite movies it's been really uh, it's kind of cute my friend Catherine, her son ben who's four um is really into titanic right now um <laughs> And she sent me a video of him and he was singing My Heart Will Go On. <laughs> was like, they were going to I was like, that is the cutest <laughs> thing ever. But yeah, I think uh, that's definitely like, that's probably like why that's like my number one is like, because there is so much history behind it. I'm very much like into history and I love like how we've grown from certain things. So like, I love Titanic. Um, well, and that film it, was like, that film was like, ahead of its time that was the blockbuster you know before the 2000s hit that was like the film so mm. yeah 100 get that um so yeah and then my second favorite movie was the craft uh oh no sorry second was scream but like craft isn't you know, so we'll go with craft um <laughs> the craft I, there's just something about that movie. I, I just, I've always loved it. Um, for those of you that don't know, the craft is like um, these four girls in high school who start delve, dive, delving into magic and they like summon this like power and she goes into like this crazy girl and she's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, I've, actually, I've actually like never seen it. Really? What? Oh my God. Yeah. You see your film buff? <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> i've heard of it and i kind of roughly know like the vague storyline but yeah that's definitely i'll add it to my list for sure part of me is like i think you'll like it but i'm like brandy so <laughs> i don't know if she'll like it <laughs> brandy's an elitist asshole and she hates everything brandy, um, I'm on vacation. brandy you have to watch all of our picks by the way <laughs> like, after the episode you have to watch all of them <laughs> i've definitely seen titanic and i've definitely seen scream if we're talking about the original so yeah I'll, I'll oh. add the craft to my list. I'm on vacation this week. I got you. <laughs> it's on. I'm pretty sure it's on Amazon Prime Video. If you have it, if not, I'll send, you it. I'll send you my. Oh, that's not, thank you. <laughs> no, I actually just got it because somebody recommended it. So. Oh, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. So yeah, the craft is on there. Uh, there's just I don't know. There's something about it. It's again. It's one of those movies. If it's on TV, I have to watch it. I've never actually owned it, and so every every time I try to go, like find it somewhere to like buy it, it's like it's never there or it's like way too expensive. I'm like, mm, I'm not buying that for that like nineties movie. Sorry. <laughs> right. This is age. Why is it $30? <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, I've always just like really loved that movie. I think it was done like really well um, for like a nineties movie. Um, and it had like Nev Campbell. Um, I actually don't really know who like a lot of the actors. I think are, Robin they're, like, up from right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, the craft is definitely like it's a really good one if you like like suspense slash like kind of horror film. It's I'm supposed to, it's supposed to be scary, it's but like it's not 90s, really like it's a nineties horror. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it it's kind of has it has that like scream vibe to it, kind of a thing. So can we can um, we call like soft core horror? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, it's it's PG thirteen horror. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, scream is definitely is my like 
other favorite movie. I have loved those movies ever since they like came out. I remember um, me and my friends in high school, we would, went over to my friend Jackie's house and we were all, we would have scream marathons and her dad one day <laughs> while we're watching the movie came in and like put a knife out the door. He was like, rah! Oh. <laughs> and I, screamed so loud <laughs> and I was so terrified but it was so good I love those movies I, they're on Netflix right now and I've been watching them over and over and over again and then even with like the new Scream TV series that came out I've been up, like, obsessed with it. apparently there was a new special on VH1 um, for Scream uh, from like July 8th 9th and 10th there was like a three part series for it um, I'm gonna have to try and find it somewhere but I'm like I like love scream and like the storyline behind it. It's so good. So, but yeah, those are like, those are my top three favorite movies. I love love those choices. I was like, what's basic about those? There's nothing basic about those. Love them. It, they would remind me of like sleepovers, like in my yes! childhood. Like, yeah. like those are the movies you watched like growing up with your friends, and like the it was like they, they, they were the trending back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> when you used to rent movies at Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah. Blockbuster. Oh Blockbuster days, just spending hours and hours and hours, just like you know how you scroll Netflix for hours and hours and hours. Right? But it's it you like, just doing okay. it in person. I could like run into your friends and like (laughs) i was gonna say with all the other people in their pajama pants and like flip-flops right like yeah definitely grabbing your licorice grabbing movies and going oh so good now i want to rent movies and have just a movie thing (laughs) yeah i love marathon nights i used to like do them even like as an adult when me and shimon like we've like kind of like lived in his parents basement and we would have like some like horror marathon sometimes and it was fun just get like 15 people in the basement and like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good makes me want to watch like i know what you did last summer and stuff like yeah, uh, yeah Freddy that Prince was another Jr. classic right <laughs> yeah so good <laughs> okay um, I guess I will do mine next. Um, I'm actually really interested to see what you picked. Yeah, so me too. Mine, I couldn't rank. I couldn't decide which ones, like, I couldn't put them in, like, an order. Um, but my three choices were um, Waking Life, uh, The Shining, and I love the Freddy Krueger series, but I, if I had to pick one, I chose the third one, Dream Warriors. Um I love all three of these movies so, so much. (laughs) Like, I I don't know. What What was the first one? The first one is called Waking Life. Um, It's by... I've never heard of it. uh, Not many people have, to be honest. Oh, okay. Indie (laughs) flicks. But uh, if you haven't heard of it, if you haven't watched it, I, I recommend it. Even if, like, it's not your thing, I recommend it. Just because the movie is, like, full of a bunch of like different philosophical ideas um, about just like life. And like, so basically, basically the, the movie is about this main character. He's never named, but he's played by, I can't remember his name. I think it's like Wiley something. And he was from Dazed and Confused, which um, Linklater also directed, but he, he's the main character. Um, He, basically is stuck in a dreaming state. So he <sighs> keeps waking up, but he he realizes soon after that he's not actually awake and he's just woken up into another dream. And it basically just like goes from conversation to conversation of like, he's meeting these random people. Sometimes it doesn't really make sense. Sometimes like what they're saying is like these super profound, like existential philosophy or um like what is the meaning of life type of concepts and they're so interesting um I was introduced to it in a philosophy class and it brought up so many different perspectives for me that I actually feel like it really did change my perspective on how I view life and I watch it like every year and not at like a certain time like but like at least every year I know I've watched it once and I continue to feel inspired every time I watch it. And I continue to like have changing thoughts about the different topics that come up. But another really amazing thing about this movie is that it was done in such an artistically different um, demeanor. It was basically 
he got like off the shelf digital cameras and he filmed it um, with, with like live action actors and actresses. But then like there's these animations that are made and overlaid. So it's every single scene is animated completely different. And so there's exaggerations like the hair could be like swaying way off to the side and doing these like loop de loops or the eyes are like bulging out in expression when somebody is saying something. So it's like, so, uh, it's just so different and it's, it's just really captivating to watch just as an art. So I think that even if you didn't enjoy the content, which I find it How very hard to not. believe. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I just, but I mean, some, some some people are just like oh, I'm not into like all the deep stuff. But like as an art, it is a masterpiece. I, it's captivating to watch, and I think it's captivating to think about all the topics that they're bringing up. Um, I'm so excited to watch this movie. You have no yeah, idea. It's so good. It's like, yeah, same. It's it's really really awesome. Um, so at the end of the movie, basically, he meets this this ma- another person like in the movie and they're talking about this guy's experiences with his dreams um and so the main character is like okay but my issue is that I can't seem to wake up like I can't wake up from this dream every time I wake up I'm actually in another dream and he's like asking the guy he's like like how did you, how do you wake up like how am I going to get out of this dream and the guy's like well I'm not really like good at that anymore like I don't like he doesn't wake up anymore I guess so he's like always oh. in the dream. and he's like but I mean if that's what you want to do like you should like you know and he snaps his fingers and he's like just wake up and then the next scene is the final scene where the character wakes up and then shortly after realizes again he is still in this dream he's so he's like so frustrated and he walks outside and then he's like starting to like float up into the air and he tries to like grasp like the handle of this car that he's near but he can't like you know in dreams you can't really like grasp things sometimes and you're just mm-hmm. like you're like why is this happening why is it happening? <laughs> he like can't grasp it and he's floating up into the air and so the last scene you're just like watching him from like the ground perspective just rising up into the sky until you don't see him anymore um And I think it's very interesting that that final scene is not like a POV shot. It's not like a point of view shot. So it's like seen from somebody else's perspective. And also the guy that he's talking to in that second last scene is Linklater, the director. And not only that, but Linklater is in the second scene um, of the movie. He's just a passenger in this like car slash boat that like the main character hitches a ride in. but he is the one that like gives him directions to where the guy should be dropped off. And I just thought that that was like an interesting point of the movie too. So I mean, I, I can't wait for you guys. So <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm, it makes me think of this other movie that I watched um, when I was in university for like this film class. Um, it's called the Z and two knots. It's really like, it's an out there movie. It's really strange. And um, just with, like the overlay, like, the overlay kind of like aspect of it it's uh it's an interesting movie it's it's about like decaying um and like pe- thing the way different things decay and stuff and like life it's really weird it's like the strangest movie i've ever watched in the world but i'll i'll find a link <laughs> and i'll link think it about it i love i love like introspective and like movies that like really push ideas in a strange way because you're gonna pay attention if it's different and you're gonna pay attention if it's in a in a presented in a way that you're not used to because you're gonna be like what the fuck is this but you're listening right so like i love shit like that and well and another thing about that movie that i liked is that like a lot of a lot of philosophy in general but like especially the ideas that they're presenting like they're they're not there's no like concrete definitive answer to them so like they're left very open-ended and well, it's interpretation right yeah and so like you're left to think about those things it's very thought-provoking and I love movies that are thought-provoking in general but yes. it's, it's a very inspiring movie in that way right um but yeah then the the second movie on my list was uh the nightmare on elm street number three I chose dream warriors I love that 
I've actually <laughs> never seen it. Oh my god, so that was terrible. I'm a film buff. If you have not seen the Freddy movies, like, oh, it's not, it's not really my avenue. They're <laughs> iconic in the horror genre. <laughs> they feel like so horror normally isn't my avenue, and then I also wasn't born in that that era i'm just a couple years behind so it wasn't really like introduced to me in the younger years <laughs> Made the year i was born so oh, okay <laughs> i was like i was like i don't know what year this is from but it's not <laughs> anyway but this movie so this this was my first introduction to freddy krueger and the nightmare on elm street and i was like hooked right after <laughs> uh, i think i was like maybe 10 maybe um my um, two of my uncles were watching me I remember I don't remember which house I was at um but I remember they were there and they wanted to watch it and I was like like I want to watch it with you guys (laughs) they were like like, you're like I don't remember which uncle it was (laughs) I I think it was my uncle Dwayne and my uncle Dan okay Um, like do you want to not call them out is that (laughs) thing (laughs) <laughs> you let a 10 year old watch Freddy yeah Krueger. right I was like 9 year old Titanic 10 year old Freddy Krueger like what's happening with our with our childhoods here but they were like no I don't think like you're allowed to watch that and I was like no no I somehow convinced them that I could watch yeah. it and they like pretty much just like threw a blanket towards me and were like hey well if you get scared like cover your eyes <laughs> I was like True okay <laughs> and then I was introduced to this this horror movie about a man who could get me in my dreams. <laughs> but so like if some people who don't know like iconic horror like Brandy. Uh, <laughs> Freddy wow, King okay. And the Nightmare on Elm Street are based on this basically a like a perverted child killer who is burnt by a community um of like parents right um they burn him alive um As they he comes back in their children's dreams to haunt them hunt them down and kill them basically as revenge that's like the premise of the whole thing um this number three is called dream warriors and it is about um well it kind of like gives a little bit of a backstory to Freddy Krueger they talk a little bit about um like his origins like he's like supposedly a son of this nun who gets locked into a prison and like raped by like a thousand maniacs and this is how he like comes into existence um so they they kind of put a little bit of that throughout the story um and then they follow a group of teenagers who are all having the same experience like with these dreams of Freddy Krueger um but all of the adults just think that they're hallucinating and having like maybe no. because only the adults as well know that they killed Freddy Krueger, right? So they right. know Krueger exists, but they think maybe their children like saw like little snippets or, or heard things or whatever, and they're all hallucinating. They're like suicidal, all these things. So they're in an asylum, these teenagers, and they're forced to have to go to sleep and. Um, they try everything they can to like stay awake and everything. Um, but obviously like Freddie is like hunting them in their dreams and stuff. So yeah, that's the the story. Nancy is the, the main character of the first one and she comes back. You, you kind of like thought that she was dead from the first one, but oh. <laughs> she's gone. Surprise. She's gone. some kind of like doctor or psychologist or psychiatrist. I don't, I can't really remember what she actually was, but she comes back because she hears of this case and she wants to help these kids and basically like put an end to Freddy Krueger. Um, she's like the supposed to be like the heroine in the situation. Um, so she comes back and all of these teenagers kind of have like, they figure out that they have like a power in their dreamland and, um, they're trying to like band together. One of the girls can bring them all together in the dream world. So they try to battle him like together and like try to defeat him. So that's the whole movie. But it's just like, for me, even within the whole series, it's so awesome because it brings back like that wit that Freddy Krueger had. And he's like, to me, like such an iconic figure in horror film because before that was like, very much horror was like going in the way of like just being very like formulative like 
get a big brute guy monster mm. whatever he has a weapon and he chases down like systematically different groups of like a group of good looking teenagers that are right. like camp somewhere or something <laughs> and find different ways to like kill them that way um and it became my scream movies <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean actually though <laughs> It seems so like predictive that people, even though they wanted like the, like the fun and the giddiness of being scared and they would line up and see those movies and they were still great movies. They also, it came with like that feeling of like kind of making fun of the movie at the same time where you're like, Oh God, don't go outside. Like, why would you go outside? Okay. Now you went outside. You're going to fucking die. Like, <laughs> great. like good job. Like, Way to go. <laughs> laughing at the movie as well right there's that campiness that it became and I think when Freddie came on the scene he had such like great one-liners and like the humor the dark twisted humor where he was not just there to like kill you he was there to terrify you and have a good fucking time doing it and like he made you laugh with him and like instead of at the movie. And so I feel like there was like a shift in film um, for ho- the horror genre in that. In that like, isn't he kind of small as like a character? Yeah. He's kind of a smaller guy, right? They too is that like those big brutes, like Michael and like uh, Jason. Jason. But then there's this scarecrow body of <laughs> Freddy Krueger and like the menacing way he moved and spoke and like just like his movements and like, he just was terrifying in a new way, a whole different way. And like that movie specifically gives us like some really great, like one-liners for him, which really show off that character. Like there's one where he like lifts up this girl. She's in like the TV room in the asylum and the TV's like kind of like up near the ceiling and these arms come out and he grabs her and picks her up. And she's like, up by the TV. And he's like, Welcome to prime time, bitch, and shut <laughs> the TV. And that was actually ad libbed by Robert Englund, who plays Freddy. Oh my <laughs> god! It was such a great line, but also because it was ad libbed by Robert Robert Englund, you see how much he became that character. Like he lived that character. He made that mm-hmm. character a living fucking legend. Like I love those movies. I love Freddy. Everything's amazing. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> I love to watch them. I literally have never seen them. (gasps) I don't know how I'm friends. No. (laughs) Are we over? Um, I remember the reaction I get every day. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I remember seeing, like, there was, like, a reboot at one point, right? Like, a really terrible one. Yeah. Yeah, with, like, I, it, yeah, it wasn't. That's the only one I've seen, and it wasn't good. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, there were, and they there didn't have Robert Englund. Yeah, I really didn't like the the reboot of it, and I feel like they missed the mark on a lot of different ways. There were some interesting things that they did, and I respect them for trying. But it was really horrible timing, and it was just not. I think they chose the right person. Well, like Jackie Earl Haley is amazing. But it was a Robert Anglin, and that's the thing is yeah. he made that character. Like I was saying, like he lived and breathed that character, and yes, he deserves to like retire and like you know, I'm sure he even like would have liked that somebody might want to carry the torch for him going forward, but it, it wasn't him. And it also like, I think right before, maybe like a few years before they did the reboot, they actually like put out, I think, I don't know if it was Blu-ray or like high def or something, DVDs of the whole series. So a whole new generation got to watch the whole series and see Robert Anglin. And then like a couple years later, the reboot was out and it just, I feel like it was such bad timing because how are they, they're not going to like compare that to that. They're going to be like, Oh, like, no, like, but if they were introduced before those DVDs came out, maybe it would have been different. Yeah. Was the reboot though, like the Freddy versus Jason? No, that was series, but the, they did a, a, I don't know if reboot is the right word. It's, it was a remake. It was a remake of the first um, of the series. Oh, interesting. Didn't even yeah. know about that one. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was like 2005 or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, maybe no, like 2010. Even. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it was 2000. Okay, yeah, 2010 and Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, huh. yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway. 
Anyway, and your third film. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> I, was like, I, I know. I was like, this is not going to be a short one. <laughs> so, uh, The Shining. The Shining is an amazing movie. And I hope that you cannot say that you have not seen this. I've seen it. <laughs> you I have seen it? Brady? No. no. Rude. <laughs> Oh my god, this movie is amazing. Like the cinematography in this movie was epic. Oh, um, like they use a widescreen, uh, like uh, what is it? A lens, a widescreen lens, lens to shoot yeah. most of it. So, well, for Brayden who hasn't seen this, it's basically about um, Jack Torrance and his family are going to this Overlook Hotel, which is shut down in the winter time. There, he's going to be the caretaker, so he's going with his wife and his young son. Um, and they're staying the whole winter by themselves, secluded. There's nobody for miles um, and taking care of this hotel. The last people who did this or the last man that did this died. He killed his family. <laughs> right? He went oh, crazy. <laughs> um, so basically it follows the family and their stay here and how they're slowly kind of going mad. And especially like the dad first. So it it is amazingly shot. I'd like, first of all, it's based on the Stephen King novel, but right. Stanley Kubrick like just took it as like a jumping point. Um, the novel he didn't read Stephen King's screenplay, and he didn't want to collaborate with him on making oh. it. So he he wanted to do what his take was on this, and Stephen King has been on the record like many times saying he hates it. He loathes it. He, he even said something mm -hmm. like, I, I, I think that he made this movie to hurt people. And like, he just did oh, not shit. like it. Right. It wasn't his view <laughs> of what he wrote. So he didn't, he didn't appreciate it. Uh, I, on the other hand, <laughs> I, on the other hand, think it is an amazing piece of work. Um, there's so many little details he puts in there. Um, even just the widescreen thing, they make the whole overlook hotel every room that a character is walking through looks huge it, it like there are scenes where the character almost looks engulfed in the room it's it's the focus and not the person and it really kind of like um enforces that idea that like the overlook hotel is kind of like an entity of itself and it's preying on that family inside everything that's paranormal that happens in the movie it is done in such a realistic way that you actually are not sure if it's actually paranormal or if they are all like going insane. And this is all in their heads because not, I don't think anything happens physically um, that you can prove happened. Everything is just them seeing it um, mm -hmm. in, until the moment that um, Jack Torrance is like, locked in a freezer he's like at this time he was like attacking his wife and she locks him in a freezer and all of a sudden it opens it gets unlocked and open and then that's when you're like oh, okay well it can affect like the physical world right um it's not just these visual things but even those visual things are so amazing like they're so creepy they're so like they are made to just disturb you so deep down and I love how like you'll see the person's reaction first. So they'll see something and it only shows their face. You don't know what, what yet is on the other side of the screen and you just see their reaction of it and it will stay there for like seconds and it feels like an eternity. And then it'll turn it on what they see. And you're like, <gasps> <laughs> 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 yeah, that's not supposed to be there. And so it makes it even more terrifying because there's that suspense and that you're, you feel isolated and you don't know what's happening next. So you feel like a part of this experience. And also like Kubrick was known for like in that movie, he like would make them shoot the, the scenes over and over and over. Like sometimes they said in like the three digits. So like hundreds of times to the point really? where, yeah, to the point where like the actors and actresses were like, completely stressed and like withered and like you see like she Shelly Duvall like the actress who plays the the wife um I've actually even heard that she's suffered from PTSD from that and that she like had really like emotional issues because of that and she hated Kubrick for it um but 
like they would, he would make them shoot it over and over and over to the point where she was frantic. And she literally, when she looks terrified, she is like at her, like she is worn so thin that emotionally, like she is there. Like she like Mm -hmm. is feeling these emotions that are so crazy. And Jack Nicholson, like, I think I heard him in an interview say one time, like he, it would be like so many times that like, he would just be saying these lines and these like nonsensical ways to him. Like just the way his voice would be inflect, like inflict a different kind of mood or um, sound silly to some people. And his face would like contort in these ways that he hadn't thought of. And because he was just like grasping <laughs> at, yeah. at sanity <laughs> at that point. And it made the movie and the performances incredible um i'm sure it was very stressful and i feel bad for like if like all of that is true about she- shelly duvall afterwards like that's horrible that she went through all of that but it is an incredible incredible performance and the story that he tells um in his way and all the details and everything you have to watch it and there's always something like even to this day i will watch it and you still find new things to be like oh what about that and like, I think there's a movie too, a docu- documentary. It's like room. I can't remember what the room number is, which the Shining fans will probably be like, uh, you should know this room. But the room <laughs> that he goes into where he meets this like decrepit old lady who at first looks like a beautiful young woman. Um, that room number is the documentary's name. And it tells a whole bunch of different like theories on different parts of the Shining. And it was also very captivating just listening to all the information because there was so much that went into that movie. It's truly like an epic, epic movie. That's so crazy. Good. The only time, only the only time I've ever seen any part of it was uh, during the drive-in theater scene in Twister. So <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> so good. Shining is so great. Like they have like so many like iconic moments in that movie too. Like there's uh, even if you haven't seen the movie, I'm sure you've heard like somebody like do the like here's Johnny or like, you know, oh, that's like, that's from. I literally didn't know that that's what that was from oh my God. <laughs> like I've heard it yeah, before I've heard about those or like you've been living under a rock like Jesus twins, creepy twins standing in a hotel hallway I'm sure you've like seen the references for that or like just like th- there's so many and they're so great and oh <laughs> can't <stop. laughs> <laughs> and that's also again like along with titanic at that point in time that was just like the film kubrick was doing things that other directors weren't doing and and it was just that was another one of those films where it's it's changed film that we have now you know even it's like changed actors the and actresses that he chose like shelly duvall and jack nicholson in horror in suspense it was so much geared towards like the like almost like a a voyeuristic approach where they wanted like these good looking people that people could kind of like watch and like the view of them would be close-ups because it would be like, boom, like that knee jerk reaction. But he did like the opposite by casting like kind of people who he could like make look disheveled. Like they look disheveled. They looked like they could like go mad. They look like people, you know, you know, like they look like your average human. Makes and then Danny, too, we can talk about Danny, but Danny is like the little boy and he has like some incredible scenes, like the red rum, like, oh my God, like shook like, to this day, like silently screaming with his mouth wide open, like, oh my God, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> blood, elevator, ele- blood elevators and everything, they have it all. Oh you have a long list, Brayden. <laughs> Apparently, I do, and yeah. then it's gonna and it's gonna get longer right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, to be very honest, all of my films are within the last uh, eight years. My top three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Hunger Games Part One, Two, and Three. <laughs> How did you know? Oh my god, no, it's actually Twilight. <laughs> Twilight, one, Perfect. two, three, and four. Um, yeah, I obviously I spent a little bit more time than I should have on this because I take film super seriously. Um, and I'm gonna tell you something funny later when we're talking about actors because I definitely chose somebody that was in Twilight and I'm really excited about it. So. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, I, I think as far as ranking is concerned, um, 
it, see, it was really hard because it's like my films, my top films always change depending on like obviously what comes out. And there's always just n- such great things happening and new things coming out. And I, it, I shift it quite a bit, but these ones have been kind of my top, my, in my top for quite a while. Um, so number one is called Prisoners. Uh, it's from 2013 and it has Jake Gyllenhaal and Hugh Jackman. Um, my second one is uh, Wind River that just recently came out like a year and a half ago. Um, it's got Jeremy Renner and Elizabeth Olsen. And then my number three is from 2011. It's got Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton. It's called Warrior. Um, so those are like my top three. Um, so Prisoners, um, this is like my all-time like favorite film, like in this moment, I have watched it more times than I can count. Um, it's just every single time I watch it, I I get, I get something else from it. Like you said, like the shining, like every time I watch it, there's just something else that I find. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me is that like, I'm like Brayden said, I'm kind of an elitist asshole when it comes to film. Um, and I don't like very many things and I'm very particular about like score and cinematography and acting and script and all that kind of extra stuff that people shouldn't be thinking about during a movie because it's all about like entertainment and just like being in the moment, but I can't help it. Um, so for me, like a really, 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 really good film is something that makes you uncomfortable Um, and something that makes you feel something, whether it's good or bad. Um, but the biggest thing I think for me is, is, is just something that it it resonates with you and you're thinking about it, you know, days, weeks, months, years Mm -hmm. later, and you can't get it out of your mind. That's a really good film for me because it's something that impacts you and strikes you so strongly that it's like kind of reverberating through your brain constantly. Um, so for me, prisoners, the first time I saw it, I saw it in the cinema and I was really excited because I was like, Oh, Jake Gyllenhaal, he's a cop. This looks really interesting. Um, it's kind of interesting to see Hugh Jackman in a really, really serious role. Cause this is like, um, like depressing drama. Like this is not like a good old time. Um, so essentially what happens is, um, Hugh Jackman's daughter is kidnapped, um, and she goes missing. Um, and essentially Jake Gyllenhaal is the detective assigned to her case, uh, to try and find her. And his main suspect is, um, a, man in his early 20s who has a very very low iq and is played by paul dano i'm not sure if you guys know who that is he also really really good actor um but anyway essentially the entire film is hugh jackman's kind of slowly devolving into madness because he can't find his daughter and he's literally trying to do every physical thing possible to find her and jake john hall the whole time is just essentially trying to hold Hugh Jackman together and also not become so emotionally invested in the case that he becomes, I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for when someone's like, when someone's like so invested, they, they can't be like, like objective, I guess. Um, so I don't know. I just, I love, there's like, there's just like blue tones and blue hues. The cinematography is good. The performances by Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal, the best performances of their career, like their careers, like hands down Hugh Jackman, seeing him as like, he is an aggressive, angry, crazy father who's just trying to do anything to find his daughter. And I think that's just like, it's so cathartic and like powerfully disturbing. It makes me so uncomfortable because you're literally watching this family fall apart and you're literally watching this father go crazy. Um, and you, you want to know, you want to know, does this kid actually have her? What really happened to her? Is she dead? Is she alive? Did he kill her? What's it's it, the whole time from start to finish. It's like just over two hours and every single second, every frame, you're just literally like, Okay, but now, okay, but now where we were going. Okay, but now what happened? Okay, but, and it's just, I don't know why, but I just like, I cannot get it out of my head every single time. I will watch it forever and a thousand times. <laughs> um, so yeah, Prisoners is super, super good. Definitely in like my top right now. Um, yeah, it's good. Um, my <laughs> second one is, <laughs> it is, it's so good. I just like, I'm trying not to get too technical because that's going to get super boring. Um, but uh, my second film is Wind River. I actually um, just, like very, very specifically remember dragging um, my best friend Shay to the cinema. I was like, hey, listen, there's this like really um, like kind of Cannes film festival film coming out and we never get them in Winnipeg ever. And they just happen to have it playing at the Polo Park location. And I was like, can we please go? Like, I just want to go see this movie. It looks really good um and so she went with me um and stars jeremy renner um he is a i guess like a wildlife officer in 
the um, really remote areas of Wyoming on an Indian reservation. And um, he essentially comes across a frozen body of a Native American girl um, and essentially calls it into the FBI. Elizabeth Olson plays the FBI agent. I almost said Elizabeth Olson. (laughs) <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, she plays the FBI agent who is assigned to the case. She's like completely not prepared. This is like in the middle of like the dead of winter in Wyoming. She's not prepared like with her clothing. She doesn't have the right shoes. She doesn't have the right like mindset because it's because it's an Indian reservation. They have, you know, six officers um, to kind of deal with this really brutal kind of um, death. Um, so essentially they do find that there was foul play involved and essentially it's them teaming up. Um, to find out what happened to this girl. Um, and it's, uh, it's actually written and directed, um, by my absolute all time favorite writer who is Taylor Sheridan. Um, it was his very first directorial debut and he, if I could be one person in my life, I would be Taylor Sheridan. Um, I just want to, I, I, I want to emulate his work so badly. I want my script to be as good as his. He just writes such incredibly important films and he has such intelligent dialogue. Um, but I think um, I think the biggest thing for me is that again it makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> you guys are terrible. <laughs> Sorry, you were just on my block. eating stuff. <laughs> um, I think for me again, like it makes me. It's it's a really really emotionally uncomfortable film. It makes you. Um, you have to essentially watch this family deal with losing their daughter um and there's a point in the film in which the the mother is cutting herself because she's so distraught that her daughter is dead um and then the father is 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 crying because he he couldn't do anything to protect her and um it's just very like it's such a cold like visceral it's a character study this this film is literally just about these like four or five individual characters um it's got this like really chilly setting. Everything's very like cold and stark. Um, but I think my favorite thing is just that like it, it really touches on the limitation and kind of like the dead ends that are virtually just kind of forced upon these Native American people on their reservations because of their repression. And I think it's got such an important dialogue. It's got an important message and it's actually just a really good watch it's it's uncomfortable but it's it's by the end of the film you're just like wait a minute like what did I just sit through it's so it's so powerful and I'm always looking for stuff like that in film like I still I like even more than prisoners I think I think about Wind River so often it is just something that I just can't get out of my head it was such a good good film and I think that's really important um to me anyway um so (laughs) that's my second one um and my third one one oh listen you I'm I'm not even exaggerating. You are going to love this film and eaten and, and not even just like, it's hard to be saying like, you're going to love it because it's so emotionally like manipulative, but it, it's, it's so good. It's so powerful. I think it's love, it's love for a different reason though. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like appreciate like, it. Oh, appreciate it. Yes. I pre- you're going to appreciate totally, it. Yeah. Cause I totally agree with you about like how movies like that gets that like, are just stuck with you for a while. Yes. They can be movies that I hate. I've seen like like The Human Centipede or Her- Hereditary. <laughs> like they Frozen. are horrible, horrible movies. <laughs> oh God, Frozen, <laughs> get out of here! <laughs> but you know they can be actually like really uncomfortable movies that you might not even actually enjoy, but you have to admit at the end that they are really fucking well done because they are stuck with you they have like yes. put roots into your soul where they they're like suck. this <laughs> they like deep into you. your veins yeah yeah i don't know why i think because like i'm not somebody who's overly emotional so i don't cry a lot and for a film to make me emotional or to make me feel so emotional that i have to cry that's a big task and so obviously that's something i'm going to remember yeah. Um, on a higher level but also I love being uncomfortable make me uncomfortable make me feel something make me want to like shift in my seat and not in a scary way I want to feel emotionally uncomfortable I want you to test me and place me in these situations where I'm essentially a fly on the wall with um, you know somebody's life falling apart or those kinds of things I just I feel it I feel like I I, I don't enjoy it more but I feel like I get more be from con- it yeah you want to be connected emotionally to the movie yeah. and I, I personally, uh, my favorite, like, I like, you know, a, a dumb comedy here and there too, but I, I prefer to be 
like provoked by something. I want to be provoked and inspired in some yeah. way, whether that's emotional or thought provoking. I I yeah. want some like that's what provocation. Is. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, and that's kind of where that elitism comes in. Is like I don't get me wrong. I love a good chick flick. I love a good like shitty horror movie. I'm a thousand percent down. Um, but in regards to like just really having like good quality films, there's not very many. Um, so when I can come across them they stick with me a lot more i think just because again it's kind of few and far between with like the whole avengers shit and like the reboots and blah 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 blah. i just like i think people get so caught up in holding that as their standard i get like a little bit like but there's really good shit over here like (laughs) you know (laughs) give them some attention um and so my third and final film uh is a film that's been in my my top three since it came out. I, I physically remember walking into the cinema, seeing the word warrior across the screen because we were like 10 minutes late and we'd missed the first little um, pair of scenes before the um, introduction. Um, but uh, it stars uh, Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton. And it sounds super um, flaky because uh, what it really boils down to is essentially like two brothers who both fight MMA Um face off each other with each other in a tournament um but it's so much more than that it's really not about the tournament and the fight (laughs) um this is probably one of the best character study films that i've ever seen in my entire life it is just about these two brothers um I guess just like having pain and struggling and and their relationship with um, it not being perfect, the relationship with their dad, who's an alcoholic. And like, it's just like, it's not your typical kind of like stand up and cheer sports movie. It's really just, again, about the characters. And it's, I don't know. I don't know why it just like makes me feel things I don't know <laughs> all these movies make me feel things um but yeah that one this one's been in my top it's it came out in 2011 I like it will forever be my top three I don't know what it is about it I can watch it 400 times it still never gets old I love it so much that is Tom Hardy's best 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 to this date film even though he's done so many other things since then um it like rivals the revenant which was very close to being on my top three list because <laughs> i really want to see that i haven't seen oh it my all. god no now you have to go <laughs> <laughs> that that film that is the best cinematography in a film that has ever been made i'm not even exaggerating the revenant is like it's a little bit long it's a bit of a like commitment but the cinematography alone is worth the whole ride it is so good so I good. feel like Stanley, I, Stanley Kubrick will fight you about that. <laughs> I, I will fucking fight Stanley Kubrick if he's alive. Is he alive? Even? I don't even know. I'll fight his ghost. I'll fight his skeleton. Whatever you need. I got you. Alfonso oh, Cuaron, like, listen, he's alive? the guy. He's, I don't know. I'll have to Google it. I, I, I would prefer to fight not his ghost, but I'll fight whoever I got to fight. <laughs> I will do the poltergeist shit. <laughs> Hence why Brandy's not into the horror films. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get scared by ghosts. I just fight them. I just punch them in the face. <laughs> you think that's cinematography, bitch? And I'm just like throwing punches. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously I like really sad, depressing movies, but... Um, no i just it was really it was really hard to like wind it down to like three because there are so many films on like my top 10 for sure like i just i mean there obviously there's 10 films in my top 10 but like it shuffles so much because there's so much coming out um so yeah that's Yay. awesome <laughs> we that made it through <laughs> what was that that mm-hmm. was our movies that was our movies that do, we was. Sh- do we have time to shuffle through actors and actresses um uh, we are kind of at the hour mark so let's i don't know it's up to, it's up to you guys what do you want to do, do? Should we round them all? <laughs> let's do it let's do it just quickly random run go through them Rattle yeah them off, I guess. yeah because it took me a long time to fucking get here so i'm gonna save them <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that okay, was harder well, than my films let's i hope you say chatting tatum chad michael murray <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly not (laughs) even like even though like chad oh chad michael murray and (laughs) marry me please love you um but i actually one of my top picks actually just came to me the other day because a random movie came on and i was like you know what actually i really really enjoy watching his movies um but brendan fraser 
Um, he hasn't oh. been in anything in for like the longest time. Um, but every movie that I found that I that he's been in, I've always like really enjoyed. Um, I loved I, him in the nineties, like Encino Man, Airhead. Oh, <laughs> so good. I know, like what? Um, <laughs> but no, Brendan Fraser, um, Tom Hanks is one of my all time favorite actors. So um, he. I, there's just something about him that gets me to the, the box office to watch his movies. Um, he's, Have you seen uh, Road to Perdition? Uh, part of me wants to... Th- I think so. It sounds familiar. The, so good. So good. One of his best. Um, but yeah, no, I like love Tom Hanks. Um, I always, I've always said that if any, if any actor were to play my dad in like a movie of me, I, I want Tom Hanks to play my dad. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and then um, my other one is Ryan Reynolds because let's it's Ryan. Because who doesn't love a good Canadian boy? <laughs> um, right. Mm. Um, but yeah, those are my favorite actors. I love sure. it. I love yeah, it. Actors. Brendan Fraser was like from left field. I was like, what? But like, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Do your actresses. Um, actresses number one. I'm sorry, but Julia Roberts. <gasps> Julia Roberts. I love Julia Roberts. Like I can't. I can't with her. I absolutely just love like everything about her. I recently just watched, I like eat, pray, love for like the bajillionth time. And I like, <sighs> she's great. Heart. I recently, I actually just recently great. watched Aaron Brockovich, Aaron Brockovich for the first time in my life. <gasps> wow. Like, recently. Yeah. So and good. That's my she favorite. She won an Oscar for that. I was like, Julia Roberts, how have I never watched this movie? Like, <laughs> So she's, good. Got some, she's got some stinkers but like i would say 85 percent of her stuff is so good um everything is amazing <laughs> no, actually she just recently did one called something about the secret in their eyes she's like a detective and she has to like solve the murder of her daughter so good so good interesting watch she's it in like a tv series on on amazon prime or something right yeah i haven't watched it mother i haven't no. watched it either uh yeah something Let's, I'll, I'll have to watch that um my next one is jennifer lawrence i just i adore her brandy your face right now <laughs> <laughs> i don't mind her actually she just i think um, we had i think we had too much too fast and now we're all a little bit overstuffed no i like love her i can sit on youtube and watch her for like hours and like in, in she her seems interview. hilarious in yeah in person <laughs> yeah i just like there's something about her i just like i loved i love her acting style um i think she's i just think she's like really good she's um, so talented so talented um, and then of course the queen of all queens meryl street i was like waiting for it uh, like, Meryl. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> The first movie I ever remember with Meryl Streep that my how my parents let me watch this movie when I was younger, but Death Becomes Her is like I love that movie. It's so good. I love, love it. Movie with Goldie Hawn, like oh, yes. oh so good. <laughs> so so good. Those are nah. my top three. I respect that list. Fuck. Okay. Well, my top three actors on I'm so ready. the top is. Leonardo DiCaprio that beautiful ah, man <laughs> and he is an amazing actor like n- no matter the role I enjoy him and all of them I don't think I've seen a movie that I can actually say I didn't like him or his uh, his performance um, yes. he's amazing like I remember being like very young like probably too young to watch it but like watching Basketball Diaries and I being, love like, Basketball Diaries wow and like it was just like um, he's like he's a drug addict in it. Braden hasn't seen it. He's shaking his head. But, <laughs> but it was yeah. it was his performance in it was captivating. And like, what's eating okay. Gilbert Grape? And like, like it's just all around amazing. All of his roles, he's amazing in them. I love him. Um, second on my list is um, everybody has a special place in their hearts for Robin Williams. Um, I think that you know he is that. Uh, uncle that everybody <laughs> wished that they had um, showing up at, at you know family dinners and doing impressions of grandma <laughs> like he <laughs> is that special person for a lot of us um, who grew up with his movies where he could play uh, he could be visually a grown man but play a child and we believe him and he was again just an amazing amazing uh, person and actor okay. and then he was the first action. 
Oh. He's the first like a celebrity that um that had passed away that actually like affected me. Like I've yeah. seen people get upset like when like a celebrity passes away, and like I've never understood it. And then when he passed away, I was like, whoa! <laughs> like I could like couldn't handle it. So. Yeah, he that's, felt like a distant relative. Like that's how. I, anyways, for me, that's how he felt. Was like a distant relative. Like I somehow knew him some way. And of course, that's like, you know, just anybody who's just watching him. His family's probably like, you didn't know him at all. But like, <laughs> but like it's like that was what his performances were in my life, where I felt like he that was there. Like he was just that great. Um, but yeah. And then my third choice is Evan Peters. I love Evan Peters. And he is um, in, if you don't know who he is, uh, he's in American Horror Story, which is a a series. And every season, it's a different, a completely different story. So he plays a completely different character. So even just within that series, I've seen him in a plethora of roles and I enjoy him in all of them. And I think that he's very talented in the way that he portrays each one of them, um, as well as in his other movies that I've seen. If you haven't seen American Animals, it like just recently came out. So good. Oh, I'll check. I'll definitely. It's, check it's it. like a, it's like a heist kind of movie, but like so good. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, for my top three actresses, it was a little bit harder for me to pick, um, but my top three ended up being Charlize Theron. Um, yes. I, I think she's also amazing. Uh, my that favorite is. that she played was um, Eileen in, in <gasps> Monster. In Monster. Uh, yeah. she, she did incredible things to her, her appearance even, um, but just in her mannerisms and how she portrayed that character, I... I really respect her acting. Um, my second was Jessica Lange, which she's also in American Horror Story, not anymore, which I cried when I found out she wasn't, (laughs) but, but she, uh, she's amazing. And just like, you know, she's a classic like actress from way back as well. And, uh, if you don't know who she is, you should go check her out. And my third was Kathy Bates because she is, yes, I remember watching Misery way back in the day and like that woman is looks like, you know, your grandma's best friend, but she is terrifying. (laughs) Like Kathy Bates is who I aspire to be. Oh, she is uh, awesome. So yeah, those are my top. (laughs) Again, like a really good list. I always like forget because I get so caught up in my own people. I'm like, oh yeah, but they're also really great. (laughs) Yeah. hundred percent. Oh oh my God. Um, Okay. So I'll shoot through mine really quickly. Um, Top three actors. Okay. Listen, this fucking murdered me. I don't know why I had a list of like 35 people and I had to narrow it down to three. So I want you to know how hard this was and how much it physically pained me. Um, So I'm going to go with uh, number one, Joaquin Phoenix. Hands Ooh, down, yeah. one of my favorite actors of all time will be until I die. Um, I'm one of like maybe six people that really like The Village. Um, <laughs> I, I really like that film. Um, but again, like just somebody who's not afraid to take risks. He's choosing stuff based on the story and the script as opposed to like, will it make me famous or will it give me more money? Um, he recently did a film called You Were Never Really Here. That was one of my top films of 2018 exceptional exceptional film it's literally an hour and a half but it's like it's so impactful um he's gonna be playing the new joker which i'm stoked about and if anyone has any problems i will give you my address and you can come talk to me and we will have a discussion (laughs) (laughs) Um, because i feel very passionately about it um he's gonna knock that shit out of the park um so yeah joaquin phoenix like forever and for always my number one i like he's it for me um Number two, I had a really, so normally he, this number two is outside of my top three, but just recently he's just been doing so many great things that I just constantly forget how malleable he is. And acting is about changing your appearance. It's changing your manners and it's changing your voice, changing. It's not just doing the same kind of things over and over again, because normally I would have put Tom Hardy on my list, but I didn't because I feel like Tom Hardy is doing the same things over and over and over again. He's doing the quiet, like mumbly grunty thing and I'm kind of over it. And I would like him to do something else. Um, so I kicked him out of my top three. Um, number two is Jake Gyllenhaal. He is somebody since Donnie Darko all the way up to just now he did, um, 
like nocturnal animals. He did Brokeback Mountain. He did the Zodiac. He did the Nightcrawler. Um, he did this film with um, Tobey Maguire called Brothers, Shook My Soul. Um, and he's in Prisoners also. Like just, I think people forget about him because he's so pretty, because he's such a good looking guy. They forget how talented he is and how physically malleable he is. He has done every single type of character you could imagine. And I feel like people don't pay enough attention to him because he's so pretty. And I feel like they just need to stop and pay a little bit more attention because he's not afraid to get ugly in Nightcrawler. He was like super thin, very ghastly. And he was just like not afraid to play somebody uncomfortable. So again, somebody who's super talented, everyone should pay a little bit more attention to Jake John Hall because he's going to be like cleaning up them Oscars very soon. Um, and my third person, um, this is somebody that should be in everyone's top 10 going forward because he's going to be doing amazing things. Um, it's going to be Robert Pattinson. He is so talented. I think Twilight did the right thing for him because I think it just showed him exactly what he didn't want to be doing with his career. And he did an about face turned around and he's done nothing but exceptional films since then. Um, so like Cosmopolis, um, he did a film, an Australian film called the Rover. Um, and he just recently did a film called Good Times. If you have not seen it, it is so good. He, he plays like the older brother of like um, a mentally challenged um, man. And it is just so good. He is so talented. He's choosing the right roles for the right reasons. And uh, I guess he's going to be the new Batman. Again, I'm really excited about it. I think he's going to do a really good job. I just really hope he doesn't get caught up in the um, kind of superhero um, wheel. Because I would like him to return to doing his kind of like no name um indie flicks so we'll see how that goes um top three actresses this was super easier for me because i don't like very many actresses <laughs> um, it's really hard for me uh so top three for my entire life will always be sarah Ronan. um she's like that super young irish actress um if you look her up you'll have seen her from something um but she was in uh brooklyn which was oscar nominated and she was also nominated for that role um She's just doing so many incredible films. I, I can't name them off the top of my head because I'm totally blanking right now, but she is probably the best actress of our generation right now. Like this young one coming up, she's she's it. She did Mary Queen of Scots with Margot Robbie and Margot Robbie, I don't even remember her being in the film because Sarah Ronan was so good. Like who, Margot Robbie who? Like she was amazing. Um, yeah, so good. <laughs> uh, number two, Elizabeth Olsen. Again, somebody who just doesn't really get looked at as much because she's so pretty. Um, she's doing exceptional films. She did Old Boy in 2013. Um, she did Wind River in 2017. And she's actually choosing roles that are um, not only, again, for fame, but it's just a smart role. So I know she did like the quick Marvel thing for a hot minute, but I'm hoping she'll return back to um, doing those kind of lesser known films because she's really fantastic in it. Um, and three is Vera Farmiga. She is like an older actress. She played the the crazy mother in the Bates Motel TV series. Yeah. Um, and she's, she's awesome. actually so good. And she's actually in the Conjuring series as well. She was playing um, the, uh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but uh, Elaine Warren. Anyway. Um, so again, somebody who's like aging, but still finding roles for herself um, within Hollywood and just kind of carving her own path and creating her own, her own space. So yeah. Um, yeah, those are my top, my top. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, <work. laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna cruise through this as quickly as possible because uh, we're probably in, what, like an hour and a half. <laughs> this is why I feel so basic because I'm like, I have no idea who these people are, and I've never seen. Any I know. <laughs> no, but it's, like, <laughs> it's okay because this is literally like my life. Like um, this is my life's passion. If I could just talk about film and watch film and write about film and write actual physical movies for the rest of my life, like I, I would do it. I love like, it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I guess I could. The world, I'm young. I still have to... the world is your oyster, Brandy. Come I, on. I now. love oysters. I'm only twenty I'm only twenty-eight for another, you know, twelve hours. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and then twenty-nine and it's all over. <laughs> hey, we oh, made man. it past there. You did, you did. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, that was really cool. I'm I'm really interested to see this. I would definitely watch like the movies that you guys have like mentioned that I haven't seen. Me um, too. Like, broaden my horizons i love a uh, good broadening right um, <laughs> i would love everybody to share like in the comments like what your favorite movies were and if you any yes. of yours are ours and um, tell the elitist asshole what she should watch next <laughs> <laughs> frozen just frozen <laughs> frozen no no 
works. Um, I've heard no. Midsummer is good, but that's it. Really, no. Um, awesome. So this is great. We will end this here. It was awesome hanging Thank out with you guys for today. Making it all the way through this probably hour and a half episode. Um, oh, well, it, it was necessary. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome. Well, you guys have a great week, and we will see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. Happy birthday, Brandy. Happy oh, birthday. Thanks. I'll stop. Thank you. It's a birthday, bitch. <laughs> 